Philip Levine was an American poet best known for his poems about working class Detroit. Why would a poet choose to write about life in Detroit? Philip Levine was born to Jewish immigrant parents and grew up in industrial Detroit. Detroit is the largest and most populous city in the U.S. state of Michigan. Detroit is best known as the center of the U.S. automobile industry. His father, Harry Levine, owned a used auto part business. When Levine was five years old, his father died. He was interested in literature from his childhood. In high school, a teacher told him, you write like an angel. Why don't you think about becoming a writer? However, Levine was already working at night in auto factories, though just 14. He completed his schooling and then he went to college at Wayne University in Detroit, where he began to write poetry, encouraged by his mother, to whom he dedicated the book of poems, The Mercy. The familial, social and economic world of 20th century Detroit became the subjects of Levine's work. His portraits of working class Americans and his continuous examination of his Jewish identity have left a testimony of mid 20th century American life. Levine taught at several educational institutions and was appointed Poet Laureate of the United States for the years 2011 to 12. What Work Is is a collection of poetry by Philip Levine. The collection has many themes that are representative of Levine's writing, including physical labor, class identity, family relationships, and personal loss. Its primary focus on work and the working class led to it being studied with emphasis on Marxist literary criticism. In this class, we discuss one of the poems in the collection. We could say this poem best represents all the poems in the collection as it gave its name to the collection as well. The title of the poem is What Work Is. It is apt as it describes exactly the theme of the poem. We know that Philip Levine had worked in an industrial area from a very young age. The poem is a reflection of these experiences. The working conditions were horrible and Levine describes in detail how the factory system, its assembly line production, the want for more output with the minimum input, crushes the soul and spirit of the workers. Having to look for jobs daily, the process begins with the waiting in long queues, hoping to be picked for the day's work. Levine often had to wait in the Detroit employment line to get work. He has a first-hand experience of how the brutal system works. The line, this is about waiting, conveys how exhausting it is to get the work. The waiting period before the work begins is even more grueling. Levine vividly paints the picture of the workers waiting for long hours, shifting their weight from one foot to another. After the tiresome wait of several hours, one might be informed that all the people after the person standing just in front of you can go home as their services are not required. The same process gets repeated the next day and the next till your will has been broken along with your body. The poem begins with we and rightly so because the poem is not just about any one worker but all the workers suffering in similar capitalist exploitative working conditions. We represent solidarity and togetherness. Specifically, the collective pronoun we refers to the workers who are waiting for work at Ford Highland Park in Detroit. The speaker also mentions that standing in the rain, the workers look at the people standing in front. They might feel that their own brother is standing in front of them. They soon realize it is someone else. However, this line has universal implications as it refers to the fact that even amidst this cutthroat competition, knowing fully well that only a selected few will get work that day, these people still nurture a sense of unity and camaraderie amongst them.
The pronoun we suggests that they are all brothers. The poet also uses the pronoun you. What effect does this have? When we read it, we feel the poet is addressing us, the readers. The poet is speaking directly to us, hoping that we empathize with the workers and understand the true nature of their work. The speaker of the poem tells that if the reader is able to read these lines, then it may be assumed that the person is old enough to know what work is, even though the reader might not do such works. However, the poet also asks, can the reader truly understand the challenging nature of the work done by these factory workers? By mentioning the depressing nature of the wait for work, the speaker addresses the readers and wonders if we are thinking about our own brother who works in such terrible conditions maybe. Maybe if someone uh, from our family is involved in such hard labor, we could get some sense of the strenuous nature of their work. This changes our perspective. From sympathy, the speaker takes us to empathy. From some worker out there, we are made to think of our own brother who is not with us because he might be sleeping at home after the night shift at the car company Cadillac. He must be working eight long hours to make ends meet. The speaker gives a specific example of a brother working in the Cadillac company. Detroit was the heart of the automobile industry. The example has a wider implication. It asks the reader, maybe someone living in Detroit who might actually have some member working in a car company such as Cadillac. It could also refer to anyone in any part of the world whose brother is involved in manual labor. He too might have dreams. Do you ask your brother about it? Do you spend time with him? We rarely find protagonists of poems or stories from such mundane background. Compare the stories of Hercules, Achilles or the heroes and heroines of literature with these protagonists of Levine's poem. These are ordinary men and women performing repetitive tasks with little hope of bettering their lives or that of their families. In most cases, what they earn will only enable them a hand-to-mouth existence. Man's greed has alienated workers, human beings from the society. Consistently made to feel insecure and unsettled, these workers are kept far away from enjoying the basic pleasures of life or even feel that they are humans. The speaker concludes by stating a painful truth. He asks the reader if we have made time for our brother to tell him how much we care for him. This line is a call for introspection. The speaker says that we might not acknowledge our brother's efforts, not because we are insensitive or too young to understand or because we are jealous or mean. We do not appreciate our brother who is engaged in manual labor because we might not truly understand the nature of his work. Can we really feel the agony of those workers standing in long queues without any hope of getting employed? Can we understand the effort our brother puts in working long night shifts and then to sleep for a few hours and pursue his passion for learning German music? We might hate Wagner's music, but our brother is making an effort to learn it despite his tough working conditions. Do we appreciate his effort? Don't we stop ourselves from saying simple things like, I love you, my dear brother. We might feel it is not required as he is your brother. Do we appreciate our mother, thank her or ask our fathers about his day's work? Often we take things for granted. It is our mother, our father, our brother and it is their duty to do this. Why should we thank them for it? The poet reminds us that even a simple display of affection will make a difference. Lift up their spirits. If we sincerely understood what work is, we would do it.